so good afternoon everyone. My name is Romario Cupido and I'm presenting an art criticism today. Next please. Uh, so I'll be presenting uh, Lita and the Swan. It was done by François Boucher in Paris circa 1740. Uh, so Boucher was known for his idyllic and voluptuous painting style. So it's just something I want to do before I get to more in detail this painting. And uh, to give some context on the painting itself, the story is based on a uh, classic Greek legend. The plot basically revolves around Lida. She was um, the wife of King Tandarius, a Spartan king. And uh, the story goes that she was seduced one day by Zeus, the god. And he was in uh, the form of a swan. <coughs> and he seduced her and she gave birth to four children, which if you follow the story, um, are all mentioned as we continue in Greek. Catherine Pollock, who's her son and uh, her daughter. Alright, so here I have um, the painting that I was given, and I also have another one that Boucher did. I just put them side to side because I want to um, like create more, con more context so I can go into detail in both of them. Uh, so let me first look at the painting. The most notable things are, uh, when you look at it, you'll notice first that the woman is naked, she's beautiful, and a swan. These are some of the most notable things that I notice, and I'm sure most of, you, most of you notice when you look at it. Right, so um, as we get into the analysis of the painting, um, the first thing we're going to look at is the form. And like I said before, uh, Boucher was known for his idyllic and voluptuous style of painting. And uh, this is notable, most notable in the mood that he said when you look at his painting. Or paintings. When you look at it, you have this mood of this like erotic carnal setting. And this is what he was known for. So as uh, we enter the forms, uh, this was during the, um, the Rococo period. And during that period, this was the idyllic uh, style that the artist paint the figures in. This rich, earthy, plump figure. This was considered the, uh, like uh, a tear or a statue for beauty. So you'll notice a lot of these figures in the paintings from the Rococo period. Uh, when it comes to color in this painting, uh, Boucher used a lot of uh, red, green and yellows and a variant of mixtures of it. So in the background we have the, the diluted green and blues and this is contrasted by the soft pink and gold of the bodies that we can see here and here. Uh, the colors overall work in harmony with the tapestry and the porcelain. That, that's the, um, the garment you see on the figures. Uh, in the paintings itself, um, also during that period, they used a lot of small folds in their work when it comes to tapestry and fabric. And this was effectively done in all of his paintings because it creates a sense of movement and it leads your eyes towards the figures itself in the painting. I'm coming to my interpretation of why Boucher did certain things in his painting. You say, uh, when you look at the figures, in this one and the one, one over here. It looks relaxed, like it isn't something forced because the theme of the painting was seduction. Yeah, so I believe that um, Boucher painted Lida in this relaxed position because as like I said before the theme was seduction, so he didn't want to show this like it was forced on her, so that's why she looks relaxed and the way she is Hoisting her garments in both of the paintings and looking at the swan shows this air of coquetry between her and the swan, like this flirtatious behavior. 
So that was done intentionally to show that this wasn't something forced on her, it was like a mood of seduction and it was something that she wanted. Uh, the swan in the painting, this was Zeus in the form. He changed his form to a swan to seduce uh, Leah. And uh, if you look at this at the swan, you see his neck is bent. And this is also the the artist using the cork lines to show uh, like this tense forearm as the swan is like leaning towards her. So he's showing it's not one sided, it's not just the swan seducing or the leader seducing so it's something that with both of them is aimed toward he's leaning tensely towards her and she's looking at him. So that's that creates the mood of this kind of desire between the two of them. Uh, before I get into my conclusion, I uh, want to get into why this piece itself was controversial. Uh, so this piece was seen as controversial because of the way it is portrayed. Uh, so as I explained before, the legend goes that Zeus took on the form of a swan and he seduced Leah. But uh, this view wasn't seen by everyone, by art criticists then and even art criticists now. So the, the theme of seduction that the swan seduced Leah, not everyone agrees with it. Some people actually believe that Leah was raped by the swan. And personally, I believe that too because if you follow Greek mythology, Zeus was very promiscuous. He wasn't with his wife all the time, he always slept with mortals. So that's why I believe that it was a scene of rape. And uh, I stated in, when I was researching, I came across a poem by William B. Yeats, and he did a sonnet in his novel, The Tower, which he did the poem, the classical poem, Lena and the Swan, but he redid it into a scene where she was raped. And it was very graphic. If you have time, you can look at it, you'll see it was very graphic. It wasn't this theme of seduction that Boucher did. But uh, I really enjoyed researching and seeing how I could inter um, interweave the Beats, beats, sorry, beats um, interpretation into this. And I, yeah, and uh, I was looking at some other work on the interpretation of the in this one by uh, Yeats and CNN stylus. And uh, it's, they said that uh, the interpretation of this painting could be. The, it, could go be, uh, it could go both ways because they didn't know who was seducing who. If Leah seduced Zeus with her feminine charms, or if Zeus, or if Zeus himself was the one who seduced Leah. So it could go both ways. And um, so when it comes to the interpretation, you either choose the theme of seduction between the two of them or the theme of rape, where Zeus using his godly powers and his, as it stated then, his manly prowess and power to take advantage of the young queen of Sparta, uh, King Tandarius as well. And I also took a, a quote from CNN Stylus where he said, um, it may have been 2,000 years before the I2 movement, but the issues are only really similar. CNN Stylus, uh, it was posted on the 24th of uh, January, 2019. So uh, if you don't know that uh, the Me Too movement was uh, this movement where women and men came out about being touched inappropriately or yeah so it came out then and they were posting and coming out that this is serious this was a serious issue and this, that was when the movement came out, the Me Too movement, hashtag Me Too movement and the, the, the editors on CNN style has compared the Me Too movement to this. So, uh, coming on to my conclusion, I would say Boucher, first of all, Boucher was a prominent artist during the Rococo period, a representative artist. And um, his interpretation of Lita and the Swan took its own unique twist because of his style of painting. He was known for this idyllic and voluptuous painting. He was able to capture the mood of seduction even though I don't personally agree with it, he 
did manage to capture the mood of seduction in his painting with the figures and the colors that he used. This is uh, evident in the next piece. The colors that he used in the painting, like I said, were red, blues, and yellows. And when you mix uh, the blue and the green, you get the, you get this kind this kind of lilac color. I'm sorry I couldn't get it in a higher quality, but uh, when I was looking at it, you can see hints of this lilac or lavender quality in the feathers of the swan here and here. So that was it. And uh, can you go back? So, on the team, I believe that uh, Boucher managed to capture this using his style of painting, the voluptuousness of the women, and his ability to create these playful and erotic characters. That he managed to capture the theme that he was striving for this erotic kind of desire between Lida and the Swan. The way the Swan's head is bent and Lida's looking at the Swan creates this, like I said before, this flirtatious area between the two. 